don't want to select. So some cases, you know, you just have to do things manually. You can't use those control and change selection mode shortcuts to make your quicker selections. All right, that's all nicely triangulated. So now what I want to do is I want to create the volume button. I'm going to do a little bit of a work around here. I'm just going to shift drag a copy of this hole, clone it as an element, not as a new object. And I'm going to pull it forward. Then I'm going to control switch, actually no, I'll just uh, remove the center edge. And then I'll scale my polygon. Um, so I'll scale it down to about roughly the right thickness. And then I'll scale it out to the right width. That looks about right. And then I'll bevel it. Change my bevel height a little. See, okay, there you go. Button created. And just for kicks, I'll move it into position so it matches with the position in the, the image there. And then, next up, uh, actually, I'll leave those volume knobs for last. I'm going to move down to the bottom here and um, Okay, no no what? I changed my mind. I'll do the the volume buttons or the channel buttons right away. So easy, just move over to my creation tab, standard primitives, cylinder, and drag out a cylinder. Just try to match it up here. Make sure it's uh, pretty much the right size. Now I'm going to go over to my Modify tab, and I'm going to change the number of sides. I think 18 sides is too many. 12 is okay. Um, you'd want to go with higher if you're doing like film or high poly model, but for a game model, 12 for something this size is is pretty good. Actually, we'll go with 14. Okay. And now I'm going to oh, change the height segments down to one. And I'm going to convert to editable poly. And then I'm just going to move this into position. Delete the back face. I'm going to translate this down. And maybe pull it up just a little bit more, and I'm going to hit bevel to get that uh, nice beveled sort of, well, beveled sort of bevel that surrounds the other edge of the knob, for lack of a better word. Um, I'm going to say OK. And now what I'm going to do is, rather than trying to inset this and extrude it, because that would create a whole extra bunch of topology on this uh, main polygon here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press R to move to my scale tool, and I'm going to hold shift and scale inward. So not only can you shift drag a copy, you can actually shift scale a copy of a polygon. So that's what I've done, and you'll notice that I didn't create any extra topology there. So that's always nice. Then I'm going to hit bevel. Um, in the actual image, it's not really beveled that much, but I think it looks nice. So I'm going to take some artistic license and give it a bevel. Now, in this case here, because of the fact that this uh, this portion of the knob is moving, so I can actually have it separate. Like in the real model, it's a separate object. But these other extrusions here are not separate objects. So for that reason, I'm actually going to inset um, and extrude them. In a, a full-out in-game model, you wouldn't need to model these in. They would be in the high poly in the normal map. 
but since I'm not doing one for this tutorial, I'll put them in now. <clears throat> so I'm just going to inset, then bevel, and then inset one more time. And get the right size, and then extrude. And then I'll do one last extrude. And then now watch this. This is a good way to cap off a cylinder. Just hold control, go to vertex mode, and then hit collapse. And it will just uh, automatically collapse all those vertices in towards the center of the cylinder. It's a nice quick way to cap off a cylinder. Now I'll just set some smoothing groups here. I'll give everything a smoothing group of one. And then I'll select my outer edges here. Ring, control, face selection mode, and set them to two. And I'll do the same thing with this, uh, this back bevel here. Clear all, set to one. And then I'll take my top polygon here, and I'll set it to two. And then just to make it nice and clean, I'm going to cap it off as well. So rather than extruding, I'll just inset select the vertices, and then hit collapse. Now that's a pretty high poly button. Once again, a lot of that would be in the normal map. But it looks alright. So now, the last thing I'm going to do is I need to add this uh, square knob portion there. So I'm just going to draw a box on top of this. Trying to line it up. And then, actually, I'm just going to, rather than manually moving it into position, I'm going to use this tool up here known as the Align Tool. And that will just align it to the pivot point of the, the knob. So then I can convert it to an editable poly. Select uh, wrong selection. Convert editable poly, and then select the back face, move it into position, select the front face, move it into position, and then select my knob, select attach, grab my box, and then I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and attach it to the TV. So select the TV, attach, select the knob, and then I'm going to select by element. I'm going to select these three elements. Go to my front view, and I'm going to shift drag a copy of the button downwards. And then just to give it some variety, and for fun, I'm going to rotate it so it kind of matches up with the concept image there. And then we have our two buttons. So not too much left to do here. Um, I've got a couple of feet on the bottom of the TV, two knobs down here, and I have the antennae sticking out of the back. So let's start with the easiest one first. We'll do the feet. Go to top view. Oh yeah, might as well save it. Top view, grab a cylinder. Draw it out. Since this is going to be under the TV and you won't really see it uh, other than from a front view too much, I'm going to crank the sides all the way down. I'm just going to give them eight sides. And then, I'm not really worrying too much about the height of the cylinder right now. I'm just worrying about the size and shape. 
OK. That looks all right to me. So I'm going to convert to editable poly, grab the bottom face, pardon me, Okay, Max does not want to undo that operation. It's a little strange. Yeah, it won't undo it for me. I'm not sure why. So I'm just going to try to translate this eyeball it back into position. Normally, if I was doing this for production, I would, uh, you know, go and take the time and recreate it, but I'm not, so I'll just eyeball it back into position. Try this one more time, translate that up, and then I'm going to right-click on the scale tool and scale the offset world in just a little bit. And then go to wireframe mode by hitting F3, delete the background, and hit F3 again to go back to the wireframe shaded. Now here's a cool little technique. If you have an object that is uh, symmetrical, or rather the elements on it, you want them to be mirrored symmetrically 